Welcome to the Astrology of September 2024. Today we're going through the Astrology of September for all signs of the Zodiac. You can click the timestamp below and you can always watch for your sun, moon, and rising. Um, and we're going to go through the events that are happening, but I will just list them off so you know what we're covering today. So on the 1st of September, Uranus goes retrograde and Pluto will retrograde back into Capricorn. This is going to be the last time we see Pluto here, so it's kind of a big deal for that reason. On the 2nd, we have a new moon in Virgo. On September 4th, Mars enters Cancer. Normally, I'm not excited about Mars entering Cancer because Mars doesn't really do very well there, but uh, it, that means it's not squaring Saturn anymore. Yay! <laughs> so we will have a little bit of relief at this time for those who are feeling the stress around mid-August. Uh, on the 9th, Mercury enters Virgo. Mercury is out of retrograde, by the way. Hooray. And on the 17th, we have a full moon lunar eclipse in Pisces. If you want to know more on the eclipse, check my video out on that. That's going to get its own video. On the 22nd, Venus enters Scorpio. And then on the 26th, Mercury enters Libra. I will say, I think September is going to be a lot more smooth than August. Uh, August was really one of the most tense and challenging months of the year that some challenges are good, right? Sometimes you get a challenge that's the challenge you've been asking for, and you just have to rise up to become the person who can handle that thing. Other times, it's not so great. And those of you watching know what, what side of that you were on. But uh, I do expect September's energy to be a little less eventful in a good way. So let's get into the signs, starting with Aries. For Aries, Uranus goes retrograde on September 1st in your second house of money. Remember, retrograde planets are not like huge, horrible things, but it does feel like there could be some kind of financial changes that you become aware of at this time. Maybe you're going through your finances, you have an unexpected thing that comes out and you decide to cancel it. You know, it might not be a huge life-changing big deal, but especially around the 1st of September, I would say really be aware and mindful of what's going on financially because there's a possibility of a surprise and surprises can be good or bad. Uh, also on the same day, Pluto retrograde enters Capricorn. So it backs up into your 10th house of career. So this is the final, the final push. Pluto is like scraping the bottom of the barrel of anything in your career, in your public life, your reputation that is not in alignment. So don't think this is like some, again, Pluto going into Capricorn again is not going to be a big event for most people, but you may see, especially with your second house and 10th house, and we're going to see the new moon in your sixth house, there might be something going on for Aries early September related to what you're doing for work, how much money you're making and how hard you're working for it. Maybe some things need to be addressed or changed. Again, these might not be huge problems. They just might be subtle energies. On the second, that new moon in Virgo is in your sixth house. The sixth house is our health. It's our diet, our routines. It's also our problems and it's our work. You know, the work we do day, day in and day out, whether that work is our chores, whether it's community service, it might not be stuff we get paid for. Sometimes the sixth house is us having to do more dishes or, you know, having to do more work after work for something that is like not paid, but it's the necessary thing, that kind of stuff. So on the second, for that new moon in Virgo in your sixth house Aries, this would be a good time to plant seeds for, or set intentions, you know, related to how do you want to be spending your time? That's the question. And that's really what this new moon is going to be good for. Keep in mind that this is the last new moon before the eclipse. So it's a good time to set intentions. If you like setting intentions with the new moon, you know, we always skip the eclipses. And if you guys want a video on why I can do that, just let me know. Going on to the fourth, Mars enters cancer. That's your fourth house speeding up matters of the home. Sometimes we really see people just organizing their furniture, literally getting more physical, physically active at home. Sometimes you'll start doing yoga in your room or something, you know, where you're like literally moving your body in the house, but it can also be more activity brought to your fourth house of home, 
um, family and your emotional foundation. You might be more motivated to, you know, buy that new thing that you want to put on the wall that you've been wanting to buy or deal with things with roommates or, you know, household decisions. But it can also be just you putting more time and tending to your emotional garden, so to speak, because that fourth house is also our, um, emotional foundation and our roots and what makes us feel okay. With Mars here, either maybe you're frustrated or getting physical and working out is what makes you feel okay at this time. It's like a stress releaser, right? And so since Mars rules your first house of you and your eighth house of transformation and other people's money, it's also possible some of you are dealing with shared resources, especially those of you who um, share rent or bills for the house with someone else. There might be some matters relating to that coming up around the 4th. So going on now to the ninth, where Mercury will enter Virgo, Mercury now out of retrograde as of August 28th and moving forward again, it has been moving forward in your fifth house up until the ninth. So you might be getting ideas about what would be more fun. You know, that's like the fifth house is like, you're thinking about pleasure. You're thinking about up until the ninth of September, thinking about how to have more fun planning a fun thing. When Mercury enters Virgo in the six, after the new moon has just been here, it really brings more activity. It's almost like whatever intentions you were setting for how you want to spend your time on the second, maybe now you're coming in, making a plan for that thing. You can also just be busy or taking care of things. Sometimes it's problems though. The success can be like stuff we got to deal with, like a broken window or something with your car or something else. Mercury rules your third and sixth house. So you could be getting your car fixed. You could be detailing it or something. That is definitely a possibility. Or it might have, you know, when the third house and the sixth house make a connection, it's just like you have stuff you got to deal with at this time. And that's really all it is. It doesn't have to be good or bad. You just have stuff to do, maybe more errands to run, maybe more driving or conversations in your day-to-day happenings that make you a bit busier. Um, More emails, more calls, stuff like that. Now on the 17th, that full moon lunar eclipse in Pisces is going to be in your 12th house of isolation, spirituality, psychology. So this might really bring a need to release at some point. Your whatever uh, spiritual habits you've got going on, it also might be a need to kind of let go of limiting things, self-sabotage, right? If that is something that applies in your life, this full moon might actually help you release those things. This full moon lunar eclipse, I mean. Now for more on that, watch the whole video, but overall it's letting go of fear, letting go of, you know, and, and maybe through facing it, maybe, maybe you're going to have a time in the next six months where you'll be busier. That's another, you'll have less time to meditate and contemplate and stuff. Okay. So moving on now to the 22nd of September, when we have Venus entering Scorpio in your eighth house. So Venus entering the eighth house of Scorpio is going to bring, it's really going to bring money stuff up, right? Because Venus rules your second house of money in the house of other people's money. So if you have, again, shared resources, if you split bills with people, if you have anyone who your finances are commingled with in any way, whether it's, again, splitting bills or investing in the stock market or something, this might be a time where those activities are coming up. Um, this is not advice of any kind, but it's also your seventh ruler in the eighth house, which is going to put more of a focus on intimacy with the people that are closest to you. Now, if you're not in a relationship, there's still someone who's close to you. There's still people you're dealing with on a regular basis. Whoever you're the closest to, you might just get a little bit closer around the 22nd when Venus enters Scorpio. And because it's in Scorpio, this might be through like, I don't want to say trauma bond because I think that has a negative connotation, but through share, like people who you've been through the same thing with, you might be able to connect more to people on that level at that time. On the 26th, Mercury enters Libra and that is your sixth house. Again, no, it's not. No, it's not because Virgo is your sixth house. I did it wrong. Um, definitely not your sixth house. Let me look. I have to look at it, Aries. Hold on. I try to do these ahead of time. Sometimes I mess myself up. Aries, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Libra is your seventh house, which means this whole spreadsheet is wrong. 
Hold on, I'm just going to fix it. Maybe I'll edit this out. A past, da, da, da. Okay. Uh, on the 26th, Mercury enters Libra in your seventh house of relationships, bringing focus on deep, making deals with people, signing contracts, making agreements, meeting people, networking with people. Really good time to network when Mercury enters your seventh house. If you're in a relationship, you might just be talking to your partner more. You might just be having more conversations with the person who is closest to you. You might be planning things together, or you know there might just be more of a focus on the relationship. But because Mercury rules your third and sixth house, this could also be a time where you're like trying to solve problems with a partner, trying to solve problems by teaming up with someone or joining someone and, you know, I scratch your back, you scratch mine kind of a thing. So see how that fits toward the end of the month. Overall for Aries for this month, there is some work stuff happening at the beginning of the month. And I would say the most focus I see in September for Aries is how are you spending your time? Is it on the things you want to be spending it on? Do you need to reorganize that or, you know, focus on your schedule or make yourself some new routines around mid month, around the 10th or so? And, you know, that is probably going to be the f- biggest focus I would say is like, where your career is at, how much time you're putting in versus how much, how much you're getting back and what changes do you want to make to that? So overall, pretty smooth sailing month for Aries overall. And, um, I will see you guys in the next video for Taurus. Hello, Taurus. Welcome to your September monthly report. Uh, for you guys, we're going to just start on the first. Uranus goes retrograde in your first house of you. And Pluto enters Capricorn, retrogrades back into Capricorn in your ninth house of faith, the meaning of life, long-term travel, um, long-distance travel, I should say, um, foreign affairs, foreign countries, languages, people, and you know our beliefs, our faith, our, what's meaningful to us. So you know, urine is retrograde in the first house. This will happen several times during, during the, uh, whole time Uranus is in Taurus. This is not your first rodeo with this energy, but it might highlight ways that you want to change your appearance. You might make a sudden change to your appearance, um, or want to start saying something different or talking in a different way or talking less or talking more. Most likely Taurus says is this is going to be a small appearance change. It could be like you get your hair cut, you know, like something not that out of the usual, not out, not that out of the ordinary, but it's a little bit different. Um, then Pluto entering Capricorn, this is going to be for you a time where, remember, this is the last time we'll ever see this energy happening again. Pluto is never going to retrograde back into Capricorn again in our whole lives. So Pluto is going to help, help you, <laughs> um, to see, are your beliefs in alignment? So you might be more aware in the next couple months here, next few months, how your beliefs are not in, are not in alignment. If they're already in alignment, you're probably going to be fine, but you're more likely to have to go like, you're more likely to become aware of how your beliefs need to change or, um, there's like a purging, purging of beliefs. What does that mean? Well, usually it means you realize something you believed you don't believe anymore. So that might be happening and it might be happening on a very subtle, low level. That's not huge or life changing unless you have a planet, a personal planet at like 29 degrees of Capricorn, then it will be more significant. All right. Going on to September 2nd, we have the new moon in Virgo in your fifth house. So planting seeds for how you want to enjoy your life. Are you enjoying your life? Are you having fun? Are you able to express yourself and make your mark on the world? What are you birthing into being? And what do you want to birth into being in the next two weeks, six months, five years? You know, that's going to be in focus when that new moon is in your fifth house. This is the last new moon to manifest with before the eclipse season. And, um, it really is going to be about, I think of the fifth house versus the 11th house as the diva versus the king archetypes. I think of the fifth house as the artist that just wants to create for the sake of creating, that just wants to make whatever they want to make, you know, and you have to just deal with it versus that 
11th house being let's give the people what they want. Let's make what makes everyone else happy. So it's about you kind of diving into what you want to be doing, what you want to be creating. Doesn't mean ignore everyone else, just setting those intentions for what you want to be using your creative life force energy to manifest, to accomplish, to experience. And what do you want to do with your life? You know, like, how do you want to enjoy yourself, Taurus? So then we go to Mars entering Cancer. Now that's going to be in your third house of um, communication. So when Mars gets to your third house, first of all, it's out of your money house now. It's no longer squaring Saturn. So if you were feeling like uh, you wanted to go, but you couldn't with fina- financial stuff, now that energy is sort of cleared up for you to um, you know, do the things with money you want to be doing and spend your money how you want to spend it and make it how you want to make it. So I think Mars entering your third house just makes that better, you know, takes away that problem. And Mars and Cancer in the third house might put a little more focus around matters related to your commute, related to your neighborhood, related to siblings. You might just be more inspired or more motivated during this time, the rest of September and on to just like go on a little, not a road trip, go like on a little trip in your community, like a little day trip in your town or see things or, you know, something might become a little more frustrating in your commute every day, right? Like, um, the grocery store you always go to now is under construction or, or the roads are under construction, you know, where you normally take. And now it's, it's longer or it's more difficult. That would be the worst case scenario. Other worst case scenarios are going to be like, People in your local environment that you bump into on your day to day happenings are a little more angry and aggressive, but they're kind of, it's in cancer. So they're going to be passive aggressive. Uh, Mars rules your 12th and 7th house. So it might actually be you communicating more with a partner. If you're a single Taurus and you want to meet someone, this would be the way to work with that with your seventh ruler in the third is like be open to seeing someone at the coffee shop you always go to or Um, when you're grabbing a bite to eat or, or, you know, when you're running your errands, um, going on now to the ninth, when Mercury enters Virgo, this is going to be in your fifth house of fun and enjoyment. And all those things we talked about earlier, your life force energy, where you're directing it. Are you a diva? Are you being creative? What are you creating? Right. And so when Mercury enters Virgo in that fifth house, this might be the time where you're planning or starting to plan that thing that you were thinking about back on the 2nd of September when the new moon was in Virgo in your fifth house. Now, for those of you with kids, this could have to do with them and making a plan for something related to your children. But for most people, even if you have kids, it's like you can still be creative and be like doing things with your energy. So it's like, what are you planning? And Mercury rules your second and fifth house. So it, for some Taurus, this could be, how are you making money off your, your creativity? But for others, it could be, how are you spending your money to have fun? And is it too much? Is it not enough? Are you just motivated to do it more? It's like, what are you investing into your life so that it be pleasurable? That's the question coming up on the 9th. All right. On the 17th, the full moon lunar eclipse in Pisces is happening. That's in your 11th house, bringing a release, right? The lunar eclipse is like a letting go of something related to that 11th house. Remember, we talked about the king archetype versus the diva. Well, the king archetype is like, has to make the people happy because if they don't, then what happens? They, then they, they die. <laughs> you know, the king has to make the people happy or the king gets his head cut off, right? So <laughs> and I don't expect that happening to any of you, but this is the energy of what you're letting go of. So it's letting go of feeling like you have to make everyone else happy or you're going to die. It's letting go of feeling like your life decisions depend on whether someone else is pleased with you or not. Now, sometimes we need that energy. We need to be mindful if our boss hates something or not, right? Because we're going to pay later if we don't be mindful of certain politics and things. But I think for Tauruses, this month may be about kind of clearing out old ideas of what you feel like you're supposed to do to make everyone else happy and connecting in with what is going to make you happy. Because even if there are people in your life, they're going to be better served by the happiest version of you. 
Okay, so going on now, if you want more on that, check out my full video on the lunar eclipse. And on the 22nd of September, Venus enters Scorpio in your seventh house of relationships. So for Taurus, sometimes it just makes your relationships sweeter. It's a nice time. You know, you get more compliments from people or you connect with people more, but because it's in Scorpio, it's not, it's not just like, oh, yay, relationship heaven. It's more like, um, I'm only going to love you if you go to hell for me and let's go to hell together, you know, or, or, you know, Venus and Scorpio, when people have Scorpio on any of their relationship planets, it's always like, you want someone to take you to hell a little bit, <laughs> right? So you might want someone who looks all buttoned up, but then they have like secret tattoos or, you know, like Venus and Scorpio has that sort of like gritty, um, love is pain, love is pain, right? So like tattoos, piercings, etc. love is pain, you know, the masochist, but, um, sometimes Venus and Scorpio can be really good for loving the worst in people, right? Loving the darkness in people. And that can show up in a bunch of different ways because you're all different Tauruses out there, right? But because Venus rules your first and sixth house, it's you really focusing on the relationships with other people. It doesn't necessarily mean you're going to get hit with a bunch of painful stuff, but it might be that you're just sitting with someone and listening to their trauma for a little bit around the 22nd. It might be that you bond with someone over a painful experience that you both shared. It might be something more six house related where you're trying to solve problems with other people around the 22nd. You're, you're going to your, bringing your problems to your relationships or they're bringing their problems to you. Um, and somehow by connecting, you can sort of solve them together. There's, there's potential here to help solve some of your problems by connecting with another person and they might just give you something that helps, but it might also be more through a conversation or something. And then on to the 26th of September where Mercury enters Libra in your sixth house. So Mercury going into the sixth house, especially, you know, after we just had all this fifth house activity earlier in the month, it's almost as if early in September, Tauruses might be more focused on like, what do you want to do to enjoy your life more? And then by the 6th, I mean, by the 26th of September, uh, this might be a time where you are figuring out what to do. There's a plan now. You know what to do. You know how to proceed. You're investing into something to solve a problem in your day-to-day -day life. You're spending money on something. You're bringing fun into your day-to-day -day life. You're doing your chores with someone. You're talking on the phone while you're doing the dishes or, you know, something else where you're the things you're working on solving or accomplishing the day-to-day -day stuff is maybe done better with someone else. Maybe you have someone come over and you just eat food together. You know, it could just be like connecting on day-to-day -day activities or handling day-to-day -day activities through partnership or harmoniously. So I like this one for you. And, you know, I think that's, that's good. I mean, that is what's happening in September for Taurus. Overall, I do think that the early parts of September is going to be about like, what do you want? What do you want in your life? What matters to you? What's most important to you? A clarification or re prior re, re, I can't say it. Pri prioritization. Yeah. Of your priorities. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> And then even with the eclipse in the 11th house, even though the 11th house is good, you're not letting go of fun, right? It's just letting go of maybe even relationships that aren't serving as well. So if you want more on that, check out the eclipse video and I'll see you all in the next video. All right, Gemini, let's talk about September for you. On the 1st of September, Uranus goes retrograde in your 12th house of isolation, um, spirituality, psychology. I'm thinking you're going to realize something on the 1st because we also have Pluto retrograde going back into Capricorn. That's going to be in your 8th house. And, you know, that time where Pluto does that is going to bring more focus on your own psychology and like you're facing your fears. So maybe a fear comes up to face, to be faced around the first. Um, that would be my best guess. And just with the first few days of September, this is all about your feelings. Because then on the second, the new moon in Virgo is in your fourth house of home and your emotional foundations. So you're going to be, to work with this new moon, it's like setting new intentions related to how you want to be feeling. 
So I don't think Uranus retrograding your 12th Gemini is going to mess you up royally. So don't think that it, this has been happening over and over and over again for years now. And so it's like, you, this is not your first rodeo with this energy. Um, but when, when the planet does go retrograde, sometimes it brings up focus on that house. So the 12th house can be, if you're someone who's in recovery or the topic of recovery is related to your life, it can be that, you know, there can be something where you're taking a little bit of time out and you realize something. Now, this might not be time out you want, you know, sometimes you don't, you don't have a choice, but uh, it does feel like there might be some, a quieter moment for the first couple of days of September for Gemini to chill, <laughs> chill. And I know you guys don't love chilling very much. Sometimes you might, but it's like, Letting the mind calm down to really feel what's going on might be what's happening those first few days. Now on the fourth, Mars enters cancer. That's your second house. I'm not normally happy about this, but in this case, I'm very happy about this because Mars has been in you, your house, your first house squaring Saturn. We don't like Mars square Saturn. We really don't like Mars in the first house because that's when people come at you and like attack you or like maybe not attack, attack, but like tell you what you're doing wrong, confront you. If you've been confronted recently, then you can thank Mars for that. <laughs> but also when Mars goes into that second house, it's like, unless, you know, unless you've been very active, now you could have been very active Gemini while Mars was in Gemini. And now either you are chilling out because you have to, or because like, you know, you strained a muscle or something. That is a possibility. Now, I'm not saying you're all going to get hurt. I just think Mars going through Gemini probably brought up some kind of challenges and probably made you be more physical. But it's like there was also with, with Saturn, there was also that energy of like wanting to go, but you can't for some reason. And now with all this like 12th, 8th, 4th house stuff, to me, it feels like, well, maybe now you, you also are not quite able to go yet, you know, not able to start the race yet, but there's something to ponder. And on the far, for, fourth, <laughs> on the fourth, Mars entering Cancer brings it into your second house. So what you don't want to do is go spend all your money because Mars in your second house will speed up your finances. Now, if this is a planned thing and you're, you're comfortable, you know what you're doing, fine. I'm not going to tell you what to do. But just know that when Mars goes into that second house, matters of money are more, you're more, usually more motivated to deal with them. You want to make more money. You, you want to sell stuff. You know, you want to take care of your things. You might be focusing on your physical possessions. Mars rules your 11th house, also a money house and your sixth house of work. So you could literally be doing more work as of the 4th of September to make more money. Uh, or, you know, it could just be that your day-to-day -day activities are just a little bit more focused on the finances. Now on to the ninth, when Mercury enters Virgo, that's your fourth house of home. And hold on. Yes. Okay. Yeah, that's your fourth house of home and your emotional foundation. So Mercury going into the fourth house, again, we have more emphasis on insight, insight and realizing things and contemplating things and thinking about things and then thinking about them again and thinking about them again. And every time you think about the same thing, it's like you get more goodness from the thought. You know, that's the beauty of Mercury in the fourth house is not only do you contemplate things, but you kind of contemplate them and then know things. <laughs> I'm not guaranteeing that, but that is one of the beautiful things you can see from this transit. So it does feel like you've got something to contemplate right now, Gemini. And it does, it feels good to me. Um, Gemini is, I mean, Mercury is you. So you're in the fourth house, which means you're at home. What are you doing at home? Are you thinking about stuff? Are you journaling or are you just moving around at home, going back and forth and back and forth into all the different rooms and you know, just moving around and moving around and going back and forth because that is what Mercury will also do in the fourth house. You'll just be like, you'll either be back and forth within the house or back and forth from home. Like you get home and then you go somewhere and then you get back home, you go somewhere else. None of this is bad. I don't see a problem here. Uh, let's go on now though to the 17th of September. We have the full moon lunar eclipse in Pisces. That's going to be in your 10th house. 
that 10th house of career, do not think that means you lose your job because we have eclipses all the time and people don't lose jobs. But what does it mean? Well, you're releasing something in your work sector in your public life, and it might be you get a little time off for some reason during this next six months. It might be you realize what's more important and you realize ways that maybe you have been prioritizing your public life and responsibilities over your emotional life and well-being. And you might be aware that adjustments need to be made or changes, just changes happen into your role in your career. So if you want more on that, I have a whole video on that you can check out. And we're going to go on now to the 22nd of September when Venus enters Scorpio. So Scorpio is your sixth house of your habits, routines, day-to-day activities. And Venus and Scorpio sweetens it up a little bit, but in kind of a little bit of a dark way. I'm not sure what kind of a dark way, but you know, when Venus goes into Scorpio on the six, it's like, I mean, one, one thing is like, if you drink wine or eat sweets, you might be drinking more wine or eating more sweets. But, um, other than that, like other than literally sweetening up your diet, it can be sweetening up something related to your time. That is, let me think, how is Venus? Like something you normally do by yourself. Now you have someone with you to enjoy it. And maybe that someone is a scorpionic type of a someone who isn't warm and fuzzy. They're more intense. Um, for other people though, Venus going into your six is, it's your 12th ruler and your fifth ruler into the six. So you might, again, Venus rules your fifth house of pleasure. You might be bringing more pleasure into your daily, daily life and making that a priority. So I'm going to let you think about what that means. Going on to the 26th. Mercury enters Libra in your fifth house, your fifth house of, um, you know, like, uh, fun kids, uh, creativity, um, enjoying life, pleasure, going out, having fun. So it makes me feel like Gemini's during the first, maybe half of the month. It's all internal. It's all about how you're feeling, you know, taking time out, being forced to take a little time off or just having things quiet down a little bit to contemplate. And then towards the end of the month, the energy sort of moves and moves a little bit faster. Mercury and Libra in the fifth is like, going to, going on a date, you know, it's like, it's like taking someone nice out to go do something you enjoy. And, you know, it could be listening to the symphony or something. And if you're a Gemini who hates the symphony, fine, just fill that in with what you do enjoy or what kind of movie you do like or whatever. It feels like fun with friends, you know, fun with friends or fun by yourself because Mercury also rules your fourth house of home. So it's like enjoying your home, uh, enjoying the space and like, you know, having, watching a movie there, putting on music there, or just bringing some beauty and enjoyment and maybe nice conversation either into the home or into your life in some way. There might be some kind of obligation to, to do some socializing around this time. I do really like this energy for you. Mercury and Libra makes me feel like it's all about connecting toward the end of the month. So I do see Gemini's having a month of more quietude and realizing stuff in the beginning and then a shift around the middle and a little more energy and things getting, picking up the pace toward the end of the month. So that's what I have for Gemini. You can always check my, check out my eclipse video for more and I'll see you beautiful souls in the next video. For cancers, we start off the month with Uranus retrograde in your 11th house of groups, and fun, (laughs) fun groups, friends, you know, social life. And Pluto goes retrograde in Capricorn in your seventh house. So this makes me feel you might be reconsidering the groups you're involved with. There might be a change to your involvement in a group that has run its natural course. And this is just the time that it changes. Uh, You might be thinking about how your friend group, like how, how many, who you want to be in your close circle, whether they're the kind of people you want to be around, there might be questions around this. With Pluto going retrograde in Capricorn, this is not like a big, huge relationship change. If you, unless you are a Cancer who like really knows there needs to be a change, then Pluto can help you see what needs to be changed. 
Otherwise, don't get all scared of Pluto going back into your seventh house. If anything, it's going to help you to see by the time Pluto leaves, and that's very soon, it's only a couple more months, and then Pluto's in Aquarius for good. It doesn't ever, never goes back into Capricorn in our lifetime. So just if you want to use that energy to your advantage, really focus on what you see come up from the 1st of September related to relationship dynamics, specifically power struggles in relationships. Okay. Some of you, you know, it's probably not going to be some huge, don't just get scared because Pluto's there. If you have a planet at 29 degrees of Capricorn, then you can be scared. (laughs) And even then Pluto doesn't, Pluto by itself doesn't always hurt us as much as we think. It makes life uncomfortable, but don't get all scared. Okay. On to the second, we have the new moon in Virgo in your third house of your local environment, your, um, communication, how you communicate what you know. Other topics of the third house is like reading, writing, learning, and speaking, communicating, elementary education. So siblings and even cousins and aunts and uncles. So if those would think about which of those topics is more relevant to your life at this time for any reason, that's probably the thing that it is. Okay. So if you're like estranged from your family, it's probably not your cousins, right? Like if you are staying with them during this time, probably is your cousins. <laughs> so you have to think of it like that. Um, basically, maybe you're also thinking about around the second cancer, how do you communicate what you know? And maybe you're setting intentions around communicating what you know, or the environment that you live in and who you're spending the most time around the things that you do day to day. Now on the fourth, Mars enters your, enters your cancer. Mars enters cancer, which is your first house of you. So what does it mean when, well, first of all, Mars just got out of your 12th house of Gemini where it was squared by Saturn. So you probably felt towards the, you know, mid end of August frustration, a lot of frustration here because it's like you want to do stuff. You feel anger that's like below the surface is in the 12th house. You don't even know what you're mad about. And then you can't do anything about it either. You know? So it's like, I think that Mars entering cancer, it just feels like a relief to me, even though it's not necessarily known as the best um, placement in the whole world, but I don't care. It, I still think it's going to help us to not have that frustrated sense of like, I need to do something, but I can't that Mars, Mars Saturn thing was doing to us. Okay. So what does Mars do in your first house? It makes you busier. It makes you more active, have to do more, maybe work out more, move your body more. It makes you have to sometimes maybe defend yourself a little bit more. Um, when Mars is in the first house, that worst case scenario, someone attacks you, right? Someone comes after you, someone, um, confronts you about something. Uh, so it can be confronting. Mars rules your 10th and 5th house. Worst case scenario, cancer, your boss confronts you on the 4th about something. Might be a regular thing though, so don't get all scared, but be ready to defend yourself if you need to about stuff. And um, Mars rules your 5th house of fun. So to have the ruler of the 5th house in the 1st house, if you are, especially if you're dating, this might just be your dating life is speeding up and you're you're doing acting in a way to facilitate that, like going on a bunch of dates or maybe even going on dates if you're in a relationship and just, or your kids, you got to take your kids a bunch of places. You're more active as a result of that 5th house of pleasure, enjoyment, children, dating, and um, self-employment gambling, entertainment. Um, so it does feel like around the 4th of September, cancers might just be busy and it might be good stuff, or it might be something you're assigned to for your work. Like you are now the, um, what would it be? Like you're now the ambassador at your job or something. I don't know. (laughs) Something related to work where you have a responsibility. Sometimes it's more public or you have to deal with people more like literally driving places and going to people's houses and talking to them or going out in the community. You know, it's like your boss sends you out into the world or something. Uh, let me know if that resonates. Just take that if it fits. If it doesn't fit the universal theme here for everyone is you are busier because of your role in life or the things you want to do to have fun. And it might be cool stuff. That's like, you're active. You're going to see people be athletic or, um, you know, just doing things that require more activity. 
And on to the ninth, when Mercury enters Virgo, that's your third house of communication. This one feels good. It feels like you'll be having more conversations. You might be also going more places, right? Because Mercury, Mercury rules your third house and there's a back and forthiness of Mercury, right? So it's like you're going back and forth from this place to this place now, where before you just went to one. Um, you know, like your favorite store stopped carrying one thing. So now you got to go to a new store to go get it. These are just the day to day things that the third house holds for us. But, you know, I do think because we have that lunar eclipse coming up mid-month um, in your ninth house, Mercury entering Virgo in your third house on the ninth might be a, put his focus on what you are saying, you know, how you are communicating what you know, and whether that is working or not working is going to probably be seen. What needs to be said at this time that has not been said? What has been repressed that needs to be said to clear the air? This might be a theme as well. Now, going on to the 17th, we've got that full moon lunar eclipse in Pisces in the ninth house. So you're letting go of something. You know, this can be a release of like you stop traveling or you you go home from a trip or you um, in the ninth house. This can also be a release related to a certain belief that you held and you realize that you need to let it go. Or it could have just been a time where ninth house things were more in focus and now that lunar eclipse kind of changes the, almost like changes the seesaw. So now it's not about what you know, but how you're communicating it. You can watch my full video on the eclipse for more on that. Now on the 22nd, Venus enters Scorpio in your fifth house. So that's going to be probably enjoyable. I would say Venus in the fifth usually is going to be something nice that you get to enjoy. It's, it's doing something you find interesting and, and Venus in Scorpio in the fifth is like, watching your favorite spy movie, you know, or like, um, watching a psychological thriller, mind bending movie about time travel or something that's like kind of gritty, but also like, um, get, you know, you get to kind of like go down the rabbit hole a little bit. So it could be something like that. There's other ways, of course, this can show up, but I do think Venus will make that fifth house better and more easy to enjoy. So that's like your pleasure. It's your fun. If you're self-employed, it's self-employment. Virgo rules, or sorry, Venus rules your 11th and 4th houses. So this can also be like, um, let me think. Friends come over and, and, you know, you guys <laughs> do some drugs. <laughs> I'm just thinking of how is it scorpionic, you know, you, or you like play risk all night, you know, play a game that's like all strategy or, or, you know, your friends are enjoying something with you that is, kind of dark and intense and it's fun. Um, either way though, expect around the 22nd Venus to sweeten up that fifth house of pleasure, of fun, of dating. You know, if it's dating, you're probably going to get deeper with someone. Um, and yeah, I'm going to stop there. <laughs> Uh, okay, on to the 26th when Mercury enters Libra. This is your fourth house. When Mercury enters your fourth house, it brings activity to your home life and your, you, you know, it's like you're going back and forth at home. So it can be that. And because it's Libra, you might be going back and forth to decorate your house or bring balance to it or do something else that's like making it more aesthetic. Uh, but it can also be writing at home, journaling, going back and forth in your mind, contemplating things, going over something in your head a little bit related to a partnership and really kind of contemplating it. And the cool thing about Mercury going into the fourth is like you can contemplate and then you can contemplate again and then again. And it's like, it's almost like, uh, you, it's almost like a fun thing to do is like, think about stuff. Uh, I don't know how to explain it. You just might, Think about your emotional foundation and what, how things feel to you and be a little bit of going back and forth of like, well, should I be doing this? Should I be doing that? Sort of weighing the pros and cons of something. So I don't think this is a bad thing. I think you might just be more either drawn to be introspective at home or to just get the aesthetic just right and like get it looking how you want it to look at this time. So overall for cancer, I do see kind of an interesting month with a lot of different energies at play here. I do feel like, you know, there's going to be some realizations early in the month. 
uh, related to who you're spending your time around. And then mid month, you know, we see more of a focus on like how you're communicating what you know. Then towards the end of the month, it's more about pleasure, fun, um, dating relationships. So I do see an interesting month ahead for you. If you want more, you can always check out the lunar eclipse video and I'll see you guys in the next one. Leos, we're going to start off with looking at September on the 1st. Okay, Leos, for September on September 1st, Uranus goes retrograde in your 10th house. This is your career. This is your life direction. Don't think Uranus retrograde is going to change everything, but it might be a moment where you get a flash of insight or you do have a smaller, sudden change that was unexpected relating to your work or your career. And looking at the first couple of things that are happening, your your 10th house success and second house are all affected right here on the 1st and 2nd of September. So this is a time you're going to be thinking about how do you make your money? You're going to be thinking about how you spend your time and you're going to have more awareness on what's wrong with it, if there is a problem or what needs to be changed, or how you can, you know, move forward in a way that is more authentic to how you would like to be spending your time. On the first, Pluto retrograde also enters Capricorn. That's your sixth house of your day-to-day -day chores, activities, your time, your schedule, your health routines, um, and your pets as well. So when Pluto goes retrograde here, it's going to bring the potential of some kind of more slow under the surface change that goes so slowly you might not fully be aware of until after and you're looking back. If you are trying to get to the bottom of something related to your time, related to your work, related to your chores, related to a certain problem in your life you need to solve, Pluto might actually help you by showing you what the problem is. I think of it as like the metaphor of like a kid cleaning their room and where they just take everything and put it on the bed. Pluto's going to take everything that's wrong <laughs> with how you spend your time, your routines, your employees, your pets, your, um, the work that you're doing, the, how much time you spend doing chores that you get paid for versus don't get paid for. And it's like going to put it all on the bed. <laughs> you're going to be able to just see it all. So you don't have to deal with everything at once. Um, but I think right now is to use that energy to your advantage is really looking at what you're doing for your role in life. Is it authentic to you? Is it what's making you happy? And is the work that you're doing getting you the results you're trying to get? So on to the second for Leos, we have that new moon in Virgo in your second house of money. So great time to set intentions for how much money you want to be making, what kinds of things you want to do to make money and what you want to do with your money when you have it and your things, right? Because the second house isn't just money. It's also the things you have and the things you own. So what do you want to be focused on having or owning or doing, you know, being able to do with your resources in this next phase of life? That's a good day to set those intentions. You might naturally be kind of organizing it anyway. You know, you might naturally be on the 2nd of September, be like, okay, how much have I made this year? What are my numbers? What are my financials? That kind of thing. So it might just be you sifting and sorting through it or, or feeling the need to do that, right? Because the new moon is not always the time where we're taking action. Sometimes it's the time that we just begin to have that seed of a quiet awareness around something. So, excuse me, onto the fourth when Mars enters Cancer in your 12th house. I normally don't love Mars in Cancer or the 12th house, but we do love that it just is no longer being squared by Saturn. <laughs> uh, so having Mars not be in a sign based square to Saturn anymore is probably going to bring more of a sense of relief. And with Mars in the 12th house during this time from the 4th of September on, Leos might be focusing on what they need to do to get rid of repressed anger. They might be focusing on actions they want to take to resolve any kind of old hurts or psychological stuff going on, or even spiritual stuff, they might be more motivated. You know, you guys might want to connect with your spirit guides or do hypnotherapy or really get to the root cause of some kind of subconscious stuff and, and like clear that out. Mars rules your ninth house of beliefs and your fourth house of home. And it's in the 12th house where 
mm, it's kind of hard to see, you know, and it's like, it's kind of like buried beneath some psychological stuff. So you might be untying some things that are intermeshed between your family and your beliefs and, uh, things that, you know, Mars can actually help you cut through that if that's what you so want to do. If not, Mars going through the 12th house, um, can be a time where you are like busier in private, if that makes sense, because the 12th house is like your quiet, isolated place. So how can you be busy in an isolated place? Well, maybe you go somewhere to write, right? Like I imagine like, you know how authors do that? They'll go rent a cabin or something and then write a book there. Maybe you're doing something like that in your own little way, Leo, um, or something just like that or something totally different that involves uh, action in private. <laughs> that can be uh, more than one kind of action, if you know what I mean. Let's go on now <laughs> to uh, the 9th of September when Mercury enters Virgo. So Mercury goes into Virgo. This is your second house. So we have more of this emphasis on like, how are you organizing your money and categorizing your expenses? Are you getting a new spreadsheet? You know, did you get a new app to track your finances? Are you feeling like you need to purge or or purify how you handle your money or how you count your money or how you deal with your money? Um, do you feel like you need to like go back and forth, right? Cause Mercury brings a back and forthiness to whatever area. So it's the second house. Maybe you're moving money to different state. Maybe you're like making eight different savings accounts for like eight different things and like moving money around and stuff. Maybe you are, um, using the envelope method. Like it just focusing on how you're spending your money is strong. And this might be, um, something like this, but it might be totally different. You might be like, Oh, I put this much money on this Facebook ad and I got this much money back. Or you might be like, well, I make this much at my job. How could I make more? What would be the plan of action? So there's emphasis here on a plan of action and then reverse engineering it as well. Because Mercury rules your second and 11th, that really confirms this is probably more of a money transit for you. So then going on now to the 17th, where you have the lunar eclipse, we have the lunar eclipse in Pisces in your eighth house. So that's going to be release of other people's money. So money is such a focus at this time. Um, so I don't think this means necessarily on this day, you're going to you know, someone's going to withdraw money from your account or something like that. I think that during this six months, starting from the 17th of September, Leo's, you might have a withdraw or a disconnection from someone who is providing financial support, or you might find that a, an agreement that related to someone else where someone gets a percentage or something, you know, it, it stops or it ends or it changes or it, it releases in some way. Maybe you don't need help anymore and now you're better. You know, it doesn't have to be a bad release of other people's money. There can be good reasons for that. And then, you know, Venus enters Scorpio on September 22nd. That's going to be in your fourth house of home. So I feel like by the 22nd, you have done, like, you've, you've dealt with some things. Okay. You've dealt with some things in September. By the 22nd, it feels like now you get to enjoy a little bit of time at home, maybe time with a family, maybe a little bit of time off. Maybe it's just movie night. It can be a bunch of stuff, but Venus ruling your 10th and 3rd, it does feel like you're going to enjoy yourself. Maybe you're doing some work from home, but it's like enjoyable work or it's work that has to do with a certain aesthetic. You know, it, it brings in Venus type things. Or maybe you're just drinking wine while you're doing your work at home and it's great. You know, it just depends on you. I know not, I'm, I know like, it, obviously, if you're in recovery, that's not for you. Um, but Venus does rule that 10th house of your career and it's in the fourth house. So it can also be that you're contemplating or focusing on doing work you enjoy or how to do more work you enjoy as well. Now on the 26th, Mercury enters Libra in your third house of communicating what you know. So you might be focused on how to communicate what you know at this time, or you might be focused on some other third house topic like your car, elementary school education, um, teaching beginners, writing, writing a column or reading, you know, learning something. You might do a class. Uh, Venus in the third, I mean, Mercury in the third can also be um, Mercury is, is your second rule is your money planet and the third house is your car. So you could just pay for something for your car. You could get a new paint job for it. You could do something that brings balance to the car, like brings airflow or brings like another color, you know, or I just like when you buy seat covers and they're a new color and just gives it a vibe. 
It could be that. It doesn't have to be, but Mercury in the third house is like, usually, usually also you can be busier, like busier going back and forth buying stuff, like go to this store, buy something, go to this store, buy something. And you need to go to a bunch of different places to buy all the things you're trying to buy. Um, it can be that, but Mercury also rules your 11th house. So it could be your friends coming over to your house or you going to their house or something like that as well. Um, either way, The 26th when Mercury enters Libra to me feels like a time where you're focused on harmony in your local environment. You might be the peacemaker of an argument. You might, um, again, just be like multitasking more, learning on the side of whatever you were already doing, taking some new courses. It feels positive. It feels like Mercury is going to speed up that third house of the mind. And it just feels like something, something nice and lovely what might come in related to that. Keep in mind, this will affect everyone differently, but overall, nice conversations is what I would say is probably in store towards the end of September. So overall for Leos, we do have a lot of career focus early in the month, um, but it feels like more meditative or contemplative focus. How am I self-sabotaging money, you know, or, or something like that, you know, where it's a little more on the psychological side of, of what needs to be done. But it can also just be some changes, some changes to, um, sorry, something almost fell, some changes to how you spend your time, how much time you get, you know, like how much time you have to work to get a certain amount of money and those kind of topics coming up at the beginning of the month toward mid month, uh, again, more stuff related to money going on. But then by the end of the month, I feel like we're focusing on family home relationships. So that is what I have for Leo's and you can check out the lunar eclipse video. If you want more on that, there will be a whole separate video and I will see you guys in the next video. Virgos on the 1st of September, we start off with Uranus going retrograde in your ninth house of beliefs. This has been happening over and over and over for many years now. So this is not like one big crazy life changing moment, but it does feel like there might be a little bit of shift in either your beliefs or your plan related to ninth house things. Like, um, if you're teaching courses, if you're planning on traveling, if you speak another language, if you're an astrology student, if you, um, deal with the law in your work, this will be more likely to affect those things. Uh, but it's also what you know in your intuition. So Uranus retrograde in the ninth on the 1st of September might just bring more focus on your intuition, what you, what you deep down know. And, and it could be a change where you're reminded of a practice you used to do and it's time to start doing it again. Or it could be something where you, um, you know, know you want to put more or less focus on that area. Now, Pluto on the first also will retrograde back into your fifth house, bringing a, a little bit more attention to what you would find pleasurable, what, how you are communicating what you know. How are you using your life force energy? Now, this is going to be a very subtle energy coming in. So you might not notice it on this exact day, but this is where the last time Pluto will be in your fifth house. And once it leaves and goes back into Aquarius, it's done for good, you know? So, uh, I don't expect Pluto retrograding into Capricorn to be life changing for most of us. But it might just bring focus on how you want to change the way you express yourself, how you want to change the way that you are making your mark on the world and your creativity, you know, your creativity and your, um, your, how your fun to fun and pleasure. So you might be thinking about what's fun for you. You might do something new that's fun and, and remember how much fun it is. If you haven't been having enough fun, you know, Pluto will show you anything that still needs to be purged out of that fifth house, which is usually things you enjoy that aren't good for you. You know, so if you have bad habits that you're relying too much on, on the 1st of September, you might just be more aware of that. So, uh, or if you just need to have more fun and you, you know, you'll just realize this is boring. I need to do something exciting, you know? So then on the second, the new moon in Virgo is in your first house of you. So this is a time you might be contemplating planting seeds for who you want to be at the next stage of life and, and kind of what you need to change or fix or edit about yourself to become that person. And I don't mean edit about yourself in a bad way. I mean, like, are you being the person you want to be to have the life you want to have? Are you acting like the person who deserves that thing? Can you handle 
what you're trying to manifest. You might be focusing on that and how you can be more capable of, of, you know, kind of deserving what you want. Uh, on the fourth, Mars enters cancer. So Mars goes into your 11th house. This will probably take a little pressure off the career because Mars has been in that 10th house with Jupiter, really expanding your workload, but also making you feel like you're going in all these different directions. So with Saturn square there, it's like you're going in different directions in career, but you're not getting anywhere. You know, it's like, it's like you're revving the engine and it's in neutral and you can't get it to go into drive, you know? So, I don't usually think of Mars and Cancer as like the best thing ever, but after this experience, I think it might help. Just the pressure valve might be released now. And that might be because you solved something that you were trying to accomplish. It might be because you realized five of the things you shouldn't have even been doing in the first place. <laughs> Sometimes that happens with Gemini. We go in every direction at once. So when Mars enters Cancer on the 4th, our our energy pace that we're going at might get a little bit slower. And to me, this just feels like, ah, <laughs> you know, like maybe a little bit less stress on that Mars, a little bit more of an ability to kind of like the crab sidestep the problems, not have to go straight after every single thing and maybe focus a little bit on more of the fun side of life. With Mars in the 11th, you might be more motivated instead of to accomplish something like it has been to, um, you know, go enjoy some time with your friends to get some emotional support or be an emotional support and, you know, putting more focus on those cancer areas of protecting your home and, and feeling comfortable in your own skin and just kind of being at peace. Now Mars rules your third and eighth houses. So Mars ruling the third means that it's going to bring some day to day, like it's like your day to day, um, commute might be more social in some way or, Mars ruling the eighth house is like other people's money or, or joint resources being used to grow your audience. Maybe you team up with someone at this time or really, you know, for everyone, it doesn't feel like either of those will be for everyone, but it does feel like for all Virgos, we've got Mars in the 11th really bringing activity to our social lives more, but that those social connections might be more based on emotions emotions, healing, spirituality. On the ninth, the Mercury enters Virgo. That's your first house. So you are focusing on your life this month. What direction is it heading? Where is your career going? What's the plan? And again, what kind of needs to be fixed, right? Because Virgo does want to um, become better, right? Always become better, always sort of um, purge negative things and, and update, right? Like updating the appearance might be happening, uh, especially because Venus was in, um, let me think, Venus was in Virgo too. Wait a minute. I'm confusing myself. What comes before Scorpio? Libra? Yeah, forget I said that. <laughs> I'm confusing myself. Okay, forget I said that. What am I talking about? I'm talking about the ninth when Mercury enters Virgo for Virgos. This is going to be more significant because it's your first house, but it's also you. So it's like you are making an impression. You are in front of something. You are meeting more people or you are going back and forth and back and forth and back and forth to do different stuff. And, you know, Mercury also rules your 10th house. So it's like your career is more, maybe you're talking about what you do more to the people you're meeting on a regular basis. That could be because your boss told you you had to go to this meet and greet thing and you have to go do it. Or it could be because it just makes more sense. You might be marketing more. You might be selling more. Um, or you might be thinking about your appearance or making a plan for what you're doing with your life more or planning your workout routines or your health routines or something. Cause the first house is also your body. So you might be going back and forth doing things related to your body. So that could either be like different types of workouts or it could be, um, going back and forth to different places or like putting on different clothes. Like, Oh, I want to try this outfit. And then I want to try this outfit. And like, 
doing a little, having a little bit of a variety in your appearance in some way. Um, just take that how it resonates. Anyway, it'll be, I think this will be a fun and interesting time for Virgos on the ninth. Lots of focus on what's your next level in your identity. And then, you know, that full moon lunar eclipse in Pisces on the 17th is going to be in your seventh house of relationships. Now, this does not mean every Virgo is breaking up with someone, but it can be a time where you become aware of things you no longer need in your relationships. And there might be certain people who you naturally separate from. And because it's in Pisces, in a slow, undefined manner, you know, like a fish that just swims away. If you want more on this, I'll have a whole separate video on it. So let's get now to the 22nd when Venus enters Scorpio. Venus enters Scorpio in your third house of your local environment, your siblings, and how you communicate what you know. Venus rules your ninth and second house. So you might be investing money into your third house on the 22nd or around then. I like putting money into your car or putting money into, I don't know, like spending more so you can go to more places during your daily commute. You know, the third house is like your commute where you drive, the stores you stop at and stuff. But the ninth house being in the third also does really, really put a spotlight on Virgos on the tw- around the 22nd and after in September, how are you communicating what you know? Are you enjoying communicating what you know? Is there something a little bit more dark and like edgy around how you communicate what you know uh, around the 22nd? Are you cussing your head off or are you like, I don't know, just talking? I'm, I mean, I want to say talking dirty, but like there might be other ways that shows up, um, Virgo, ar- around the 22nd, but it does feel like overall there's, maybe you're reading a spiritual book, you know, cause it's that ninth house planet of, of meditation and like not meditation. Ninth house is like intuition and higher knowledge. And it comes into the third house of like things that are easy to understand. So are you making higher knowledge easier to understand? Are you enjoying making it easier to understand? Are you reading about it or learning about it or teaching about it or talking about really high level concepts in a, I don't know, kind of gritty way? Maybe that's what's happening. Either way, it does feel like conversations can be more pleasing at this time. And there might be a focus on taking conversations to a deeper level at this time. So going on to the 26th, when Mercury enters Libra, that's your second house of money. You might be planning or focusing or thinking a lot about money. You might be going back and forth with money because Mercury is in the second house. So it's like juggling a little bit here and a little bit there, or like getting a few different savings accounts and like putting, you know, putting different names on them or, or, you know, doing something like that, where you're trying to bring balance to your finances. And, um, you might also be doing something related to your finances that, that is connected to other people or, you know, brings harmony or, Sometimes it can be art and stuff because it's Libra, but oftentimes it's going to be something related to money and relationships, like something related to spending money on connecting with people or, um, you know, getting one-on-one clients or, or something related to your finances and relationships. So relationships and finances are a theme that could be someone's teaching you how to do something with money or teaching them. Uh, it could be your, your relationships. You're having more conversations about money. It could be that, but it's like in a positive way, like, like in a balanced way, like you met, made a friend who makes more money and they're just telling you what it's like for them. You know, it's just easy. Mercury rules your 10th house though. So having your 10th house ruler in the second house, I would say overall is generally a positive indicator for money because it's like your work can bring you money on the 26th. Um, so that's, it's not a guarantee, but it's definitely a possibility. So for Virgo, when it comes to September, I'm seeing the early part of September, the first and second being a little more contemplative, a change related to your ninth house of teaching or, or learning. And then you kind of planting seeds related to your next level of development, maybe more socializing or more action around um, building an audience if you have one, or just hanging out with friends or um, making money from the work you do around the fourth. And then, you know, down to the 17th where we're ninth and 17th, you know, it's all about who you are with and what, what your identity is based on the people around you. 
And then toward the end of the month, more interesting things related to, again, learning and teaching around the third, around the 22nd. And, um, also money being an, another point of focus at the end of the month. Overall feels very balanced, feels like a lot of different energies happening. And, um, I don't see any major huge things to like watch out for this month. It does feel like it'll be the calm after the storm of last month. So that is what I have for Virgos. And we will move on to our next sign now, which is going to be Libra. For Libra, September 1st, Uranus goes retrograde in your eighth house of other people's money, of psychic development, of intimacy. So there might be a slight change to your level of intimacy with another person. But for Libras, I'm also seeing the first couple days of September as being more introspective and psychological, where maybe you're facing a fear, maybe you're realizing um, something you want on an emotional level in a deeper way. We have Pluto retrograding back into Capricorn. That's your fourth house of your emotional foundations. And then on the 2nd of September, we have the new moon in Virgo in your 12th house. So it's lighting up these more psychological houses that are all about feelings and fears and how we overcome them. So Libras might be facing a fear early in the month and it might be facing a fear you want to face. And, you know, so you can be the person who's no longer afraid of that thing. You know, there, there can be some small minor transformation happening, I think for Libras around this time. Now on the 4th of September, Mars enters cancer. That's going to be your 10th house of career. This will bring some activity to your public life, your career, your role. It could just make you busier at the workplace. It can make your work more visible and you doing more visible work and being busier doing visible work. It might make you more motivated to you know, up level and expand your reputation and, you know, get better at what you do and get to a higher level. And, you know, for you, Mars rules your second house and your seventh house. So your second house of money in the 10th house, sometimes that means you're investing into something. It's almost like you're investing into some people like, right. They'll get a coach to help them like, um, make, get clients or something. I'm not saying you should do that. Uh, that's going to have to be up to you. But sometimes it's like you're investing your time and energy into your work, into being able to do the work you want to be doing. That might be taking a class or something, but it feels a little bit more like gaining skills and maybe either gaining skills or finding the right people to be with uh, or to connect with or to help you. Now, going on to the ninth, when Mercury enters Virgo, that's your 12th house. So Mercury in the 12th house brings more of a back and forth energy into uh, your fears, psychological things, things that we don't usually look at unless we're taking the time to see. Now, this could be uh, sometimes the 12th house stuff is like pe things people work through using a therapist. I am not, um, diagnosing anything or recommending anything, but sometimes we see, you know, it's like you're going back and forth into your subconscious mind. Uh, so what are you doing, Libra? Are you, are you facing a fear? Are you seeing things from the past? Is it just a time where things from the past are coming up and you have created the space in your life to realize like, Oh my God, that pattern started when I was in third grade. And now I remember that, you know, and not just remembering it, but having a new level of conscious awareness to that thing so that when the memory does come up, then you are seeing it from new eyes, right? So for you, Mercury rules your ninth house of beliefs and it rules your 12th house of, again, the subconscious mind isolation. So it might be like you're meditating and stuff comes up this this early this month to the mid month, or it might be something else going on where you're just realizing things that you couldn't see before because you're at a new level and you are now the person who can handle what you are seeing. So if that does happen for you this month, Libra, congratulate yourself because it takes a lot of work to have that courage that to be able to see things you couldn't see. Now, going on to mid-month, the 17th, we have the lunar eclipse in Pisces. That's going to be in your sixth house of how you spend your time, your health routines. It's going to be related to the work that you do, the chores that you do, the responsibilities that you have, and the problems you have to overcome on a day-to-day -day basis. Having the lunar eclipse in this sector of life might mean you're releasing. I mean, it's possible you could release a job in the next six months, but you know, that kind of depends on how much you're enjoying it. Maybe you really like your job and it's releasing a certain role or, or you 
who knows, maybe you're at a job Libra and you get to move up and you don't have to do the paperwork or answer the phones anymore. You know, it could be that Venus enters Scorpio on the 22nd. That's going to be your second house. So I like Venus in the second house because it's like you enjoy your money, right? It's like it brings joy or ease to the topic of money, but Venus ruling your eighth house and first house. Well, first of all, some of you could be getting money from somebody else. Like some other person's money goes into your bank account. This could be a bonus from your boss. It could be someone sends you birthday money. It could be something else, right? Especially if you have a partner who is the main breadwinner or who you rely on financially at this time, then that is really likely to be a deposit or they give you some money or they help you out. Um, but you know, Venus also rules your first house of you. So it means you're focusing on your money around the 22nd. And if it's tangled up in things you don't want it to be, you might just be focusing on untangling it because for you, Scorpio rules your second house. So Venus is in Scorpio during that time where she is, I mean, not in her favorite place to be, <laughs> but what that looks like for you is that money is a little bit more tangled up. You know, it, it has more, I always think of Venus and Scorpio as like love equals pain, right? So like people with Venus and Scorpio love the darkness in other people and they don't want them to just be, it shouldn't be good or easy. There has to be some strings attached. There has to be some something possessive, some kind of like deeper tie, right? So how is that going to show up in your second house though? Well, maybe there's some deeper ties to money that you're seeing or you're making at this time. This is not advice. It's just a read of what might be happening energetically. So let's go on now to the 26th. Mercury enters Libra. This is going to be It'll bring more activity to your life. You might be going back and forth and doing things or going back and forth and talking about things, going back and forth and having more conversations than you normally have, making connections, you know, Mercury in that first house in Libra being you, like you are talking more. What are you talking about? Balance, harmony, art, beauty, connections, how you know, you might be even having, you might be even having some contrary conversations because, um, okay. Libra sometimes wants to tell you the other side of a thing. So when Mercury is on Libra, you might be having more conversations about either you're, you're getting the information from someone else and they're telling you more about the other side of the story or, you know, the other person's perspective in the scenario, or you're doing that. Maybe you're being the devil's advocate for somebody else. Because Mercury rules your ninth and 12th house, it could be that things related to beliefs and psychology are informing your life decisions right now, or the reasons why you're doing what you're doing. You want to make a choice that you can believe is the right one, or you want to make a choice that relates to you uh, not carrying on baggage from the past and moving, moving free of things that used to hold you back or unconscious ties to things that you no longer want to be tied to. Uh, so I see this as kind of like a liberating moment for Libras on the 26th, where it's like, let's just move forward with the connections we want to connect with and not be so motivated by fear. Um, so that's kind of what I see here for Libra. The overall gist of the month is that the beginning and the end are quite psychological in terms, especially the beginning of like figuring out what's going on financially or psychologically with your own self and like, you know, feeling, feeling your feelings and realizing what's going on with them. And then, you know, there's work stuff, there's money stuff, there is psychological stuff, there's stuff with habits. You know, you get a little bit of like a sprinkling of everything this month. Um, but I do think it's like starting new habits that support you in keeping your psychological and emotional foundation what you want it to be so that you can have the financial or the, um, you know, the financial success or the reputation or the, the, role in career that you want to be having. So that is what I have for Libras. Let me know if it relates. I always love hearing from you and I will see you beautiful souls in the next video. 
Scorpio, welcome to September. Uh, we're going to start on the first when Uranus goes retrograde in your seventh house. This is not going to be crazy life changing relationship stuff, but you might realize something or something might come up that is unexpected that needs to be dealt with with another person. Keep in mind, if you're not in a relationship, it's still going to be with another person. If you are in a relationship, it's probably that person. So just something unexpected, something changing. This is not your first rodeo. You've been through Uranus retrograding your seventh a bunch of times before already, but it's those sudden realization around something related to a partner or a small sudden change related to partnership. Now, Pluto also enters Capricorn on the same day, the 1st of September. That's going to be in your third house of communication. So Pluto bringing the awareness, maybe not exactly on this day, of what needs to be changing your communication or You know, when it comes to communicating what you know, you might realize things that you want to change about that. And that might just be obsessively buying a bunch of books on your Kindle like I do. (laughs) But it really could be. It really could be you um, reading a bunch of stuff, wanting to go deep into like what you know about things. This is going to be the last time Pluto goes into Capricorn. So it'll be our last experience with this energy for the rest of our lives. And most of us are kind of sick of it by now. (laughs) So, so, you know, dive into your books, dive into your mind, dive into the deeper meaning of everything, you know, learn all about whatever you want to learn about at this time. And just know it doesn't mean you can't learn anymore. It's just Pluto might bring you deeper into that sector of life during this time. Now on the second, we have a new moon in Virgo in the 11th house of friends of, this is also a money house. This is a house about networking and and collaborating and it's, it's the people, right? It's the public that you deal with. It's the group of people you see all the time. It's the people you hang out with. It's the people. So new moon in Virgo on the second is a good time to set intentions for what kind of people you want to be around in the future, what kind of audience you want to have, how you want to grow your audience, if that's something you're trying to do and you know, how you can sort of quote unquote, give the people what they want in that archetype so that you get what you want or so that, you know, you can make the world a better place in the way that you want to. So going on now to the 4th of September, we have Mars entering Cancer in your ninth house. So the good news about Mars entering Cancer in the ninth is that it stops the pressure to act that has been happening mid to the end of August in your eighth house of other people's money. It's almost like maybe there was some pressure around finances or loans or something. So it doesn't make that all better, but it does kind of release the pressure valve that we've been having. Now, Mars going into the ninth usually makes you more motivated to defend your beliefs, or you might actually be more excited or motivated to listen to your intuition or develop your intuition or um, take time to kind of get close to God, right? Ninth house is a house of God. You can call it whatever you want, but you might want to be closer to your spirituality. You might feel motivated to take a trip, to go travel, to speak another language. Mars is what you're going to be motivated to do. And Mars ruling your sixth house, being the planet of what you do every day and it going into your ninth house, you might be going on a vacation, Scorpio, or you might be wanting to travel at this time. Um, that would be like just a normal expression of the energies. But for those who are not traveling, it's, it's going somewhere in your mind. It's like the quest, you know, and being motivated to feel like your life is meaningful at this time. So now on the ninth, Mercury enters Virgo. That's your 11th house. Again, getting, excuse me, getting some attention. And when Mercury goes in a sign though, uh, instead of planting seeds, like we did at the new moon, it's like a back and forth energy of talking to a bunch of different people are going back and forth between these people and those people, this audience and that audience, this life dream and that life dream, and kind of needing to have some variety there or, or contemplate different options or something. Now, Mercury rules your 8th and 11th house. So being the 8th house ruler of other people's money and intimacy, it's like it brings the topic of intimacy into your networking or your friends or people who maybe you normally aren't quite so close to. So there's a chance that, you know, Scorpios could be getting closer to the people that you know that are normally more at arm's length at this time. So going on now to the next 
a major thing happening, and that's going to be the lunar eclipse in Pisces on the 17th. So that's happening in your fifth house of fun and self-expression. It doesn't mean you're going to lose yourself or something. But during this eclipse cycle, maybe there's less of a focus on your own interests and more of a focus on the 11th house, which is going to be like giving people what they want. Um, more on this in the eclipse video. First, and then the next, then I was going to say, first of all, <laughs> the next thing happening is on the 22nd, Venus enters Scorpio. That's your first house of you. So when Venus goes into your first house, usually you're looking your best. It's, they say it's a good time to get your pictures taken. If you're someone who has like a need to get headshots or, or something like that, it's, it's your, you look your most pretty. You look, look your most beautiful or your most handsome during the time Venus goes into your first house. You might also be thinking more about your appearance. You know, it's it's not uncommon when Venus enters your first house to do something to kind of freshen up your look or, um, you know, get a new haircut or a new hairstyle or something. Uh, Venus also rules your seventh house. So for you around the 22nd, relationships may become a more important part of your life. They might be in encouraging you to go in a certain life direction, or you might just be enjoying spending time with your partner and like just loving being around them. And, and that's it. Uh, Venus also rules your 12th house of the subconscious mind and, and like self-sabotage and stuff like that. So you might be bringing isolation into your day-to-day -day life, or you might be realizing or wanting to overcome fears, especially related to the way that you look. Uh, but going on now to the, the last aspect we're going to talk about for the month, which is when Mercury enters Libra. For you, that's your 12th house, and Mercury rules your 8th and 11th houses. So Mercury in the 12th house brings a back and forth energy into your psychological life or your spiritual life. So it's kind of like a time where you're thinking about stuff privately. You know, you're thinking about private stuff you wouldn't want people to know. You're contemplating it. You're going back and forth in your mind about it. It might be money related because the 8th and the 11th both have financial connections. Uh, or it might be an intimacy thing, like a relationship thing where you're considering whether this person is good for you or not, right? And this could be a relationship person, or it could be like a workplace situation to any other person, right? Because the eighth house is intimacy, but it can be intimacy with any person, right? You can get close to anybody. Maybe you've gotten closer to someone recently, and now you're like, I don't want to be this close to them, or you're realizing that maybe they don't have your best interests at heart, or you're weighing that back and forth. This can be something on your mind at this time. So overall for September for Scorpios, there is a lot of stuff, different energies being affected here. So we have things related earlier in the month, things about communication, how you're communicating in relationships, what kind of people you want to be around, what your beliefs are, um, what your goals are in life and what your plan is to reach them by mid month, um, uh, changes to what you find pleasurable or maybe letting go of something, especially a bad habit that you've been enjoying or, you know, just the cycle where you don't get to do that thing as much anymore. And then, you know, some relationship stuff again, toward the end of the month. So it does look like an, an, a nice, interesting month for Scorpio. I do see a lot of, um, kind of subtle change, no like major crazy hiccup going on. So I like that for you. I hope you enjoy your September and I'll see you in the next video. So here we go for Sagittarius for September. For Sagittarius, on the 1st of September, Uranus goes retrograde in your sixth house, maybe making some kind of change to how you spend your time. It might not be a big change. It might be a minor change. Then on the 1st also, Pluto goes retrograde into Capricorn in your second house also possibly changing or bringing attention to finances and what needs to change related to finances. And then on the second, the new moon in Virgo is the time where you're likely to be setting intentions for what you want your role in life to be in terms of career. So the first few days of the month here, I see you really focused on what you're doing, how you're spending your time and how you're making your money. Then on to the fourth, we have Mars entering Cancer on your eighth house. This can motivate you to pay off debt. This could be something that brings in the topic of shared resources. So especially if you have like roommates who you share, like 
you share rent with each other or like, um, let's say you have someone in your life who does support you financially or something else like that. It's likely to be one of those things, but it can also be Mars entering cancer in your eighth can also be you being more interested in the occult and the other side and, you know, doing tarot readings or, you know, things that are designed to kind of take you beyond the veil. Mars rules your fifth house of fun. So you might be having fun doing eighth house stuff, like getting intimate with someone <laughs> or, and that intimacy can be sexual or otherwise, or it can also be, you know, wanting to know people's secrets, wanting to know people's motives and being motivated to figure them out. On to the ninth Mercury enters Virgo in your 10th house where you might be making a plan or gathering data um, about your next moves when it comes to career. You might be just dealing with data and information in your career at this time. Um, Mercury rules your 7th and 10th. So it's like um, your work your work causes you to need to go through the information and like analyze it or something. That could be a thing, but Mercury in the 10th can also be you communicating more, you doing something that requires more organized communication and, and just speaking, speaking more for your job at this time, talking to people, doing announcements, you know, speaking facts. Uh, so that doesn't look bad at all. Sometimes there's a back and forth energy though, wherever Mercury goes. So you may find that you're going back and forth and saying this and saying that, or talking about this or talking about that, or gathering this information and gathering that information. Now on to the 17th, we have the full moon lunar eclipse in Pisces in your fourth house of home. So you might be you might be moving in the next six months. You might be more aware at this time of what needs to change when it comes to your physical house or home. There might be something changing with your family of origin. There could also be changes to how you feel about your emotional foundation. It could be releasing something that I'm trying to think of something. Let's say you had a habit of like journaling every day to feel better. Maybe now you don't need to anymore, right? So that's an example of something that you might be releasing in that eclipse cycle. But remember the eclipse doesn't usually do anything on that day. It usually is a bigger life change that happens within that six month window. So that being said, that's why I said you could move in the next six months, especially if that's what you want to do, like releasing a home in a physical place and gaining one somewhere else. So on to the 22nd. If you want more on the eclipse, there'll be another video on that. On the 22nd, Venus enters Scorpio in your 12th house. Okay, one of the good things about this one, <laughs> Sagittarius, is as of the 22nd of September, the 12th house rules bed pleasures. So Venus going into that house of privacy is like you can enjoy yourself more in private. Uh, but you might actually be enjoying yourself more in private during that transit in other ways too, like to understand yourself psychologically or connect with your spirit guides or go to an altered state of consciousness or realize things about yourself that you were traumatized by, but in a way that is beneficial to your life. This is not a diagnosis by any means, but it does feel like Venus in Scorpio in the 12th for you is like the spoonful of sugar that helps the medicine go down when it comes to recognizing your problems, especially with the way that you are. <laughs> What's wrong with you, Sagittarius? <laughs> you might be figuring it out on the 22nd, but it's like you're enjoying figure out, figuring out what's wrong with you, or it brings more of an ease to do this type of work. So if you want to do deep work into your psyche or subconscious mind, Venus will make that process more enjoyable. So sometimes that might be you just have the right person helping you do it, or you found a really good meditation that's like blowing your mind, but it's like it easily guides you to these things. Now, Venus rules your sixth house of what you do day to day and your 11th house of people, of friends, of community, and they're going into the seventh, into the 12th house. So that can bring those topics into a more private way. So Maybe like you're doing your work more in private during the 22nd. Maybe you have some um, isolated work you need to get done. Maybe you're, I don't really understand how groups could go into private, um, but it's like 
maybe you're taking topics related to groups of people and you're analyzing that privately and you're thinking about it privately, or you're going over group dynamics in your mind, that kind of thing. So going now on to the last thing of the month, we have Mercury entering Libra. That's happening in your 11th house of, again, people, the public, private. I mean, not private. Oh my gosh. Um, your 11th house of friends, associates, the people you meet, your hopes and dreams, and mostly it's just your socializing. So you're talking to people more probably as of the 26th. You might be making more announcements to your audience if you have an audience. You might be focused more on putting yourself out there and going into some kind of group thing, joining a group, speaking in a group, listening to a group, doing a meditation or a fun you know, social thing might be happening around the 26th. Because Mercury rules your 7th and 10th, this could be you and a friend going to an event, or it could be your work for work, doing something more social that is motivated by your work. You want to sell something to a group of people or something like that, like a webinar or something, or, you know, an in-person webinar, like a, an event, or like, you know, you're going to an event, but your motive is to talk about your business. You know, you want to meet people so they know what you do and stuff like that. So it could be any of those things. Uh, so let's kind of recap this for Sag. Um, for the first of the month is definitely thinking about money, work, reevaluating how you spend your time, maybe a sudden change to your schedule that you weren't expecting. That could be just a one day thing. It might not be a permanent thing, uh, but definitely focusing on where we want to be financially in the next stage of life and, and having some focus too, especially on like what problems we need to solve with our money, like once and for all kind of a feeling and what new intentions we want to set in our role in life. How do we want to, what level do we want to step into or what needs to be organized so that we can, you know, have the success we want to have. Then we have some intimacy and relationship stuff, more work related stuff around the ninth. We have some emotional release around the 17th and psychological stuff around the 22nd, followed by something more social at the end of the month. So it does feel like a sprinkling of everything this month. Uh, and I hope you enjoyed your reading. I hope you enjoy your September. And if you want more, you can always check out my video on the eclipse. I will see you Sagittarius in the next one. Now let's go on to our next sign, which is our Capricorns. Okay, Capricorns for September. We're starting off with Uranus retrograding in your fifth house. So Uranus goes retrograde here, maybe bringing a sudden change to fun. Now this could be a positive change to something that is pleasing to you. It could be just an unexpected surprise related to the topic of pleasure and fun and enjoyment or even your kids. Uh, but it might be an unexpected not good surprise, right? Like it might not be like, yay, surprise. <laughs> it might be like you love watching this show every day and surprise your internet's off. You know, like we don't know whether Uranus is going to bring a welcome surprise or an unwelcome one, but we know that there will be like something stimulating going on here. Uh, so there'll be some action happening in your fifth house of pleasure on the first. Also on the first, Pluto goes retrograde in Capricorn into your first house and this is going to be the last time Pluto is going into your house. Capricorns, celebrate with me that the next report I give you on Pluto will be when Pluto leaves Capricorn for good and it's never coming back. So I want you guys to just think about how you've changed in the last 10 or 20 years and you know what Pluto has transformed in your life because you are about to be a new version of you that you know, Pluto has kind of had a slow burn working on you changing your identity. So it doesn't mean you'll never change again, but the way that Pluto changes us is by kind of a forced surrender. And that, I think that's going to be a welcome change for you to have Pluto getting out of that first house. Um, but for now, what it means is if you want to change your appearance or you want to change your body or you want to get to the root cause of what's making you look a certain way or come across a certain way, you can use that Pluto in the in your house to support those activities. Um, it's just a good time energetically for that. So you don't have to though. On the second, you have a new moon in your ninth house of beliefs, foreign travel, of the meaning of life, of God, of spirituality, and 
astrology and publishing. So if you want to do any of those things I just listed, it's a good time to plant seeds for that. Or for things like foreign languages or the law, you know, anything far off, anything related to the quest in life that you're on. So that new moon in Virgo is like you, you, you don't embark upon the new quest on the 2nd of September. You plant the seeds that you'll need to grow to embark upon the quest. So it's a good time to set intentions, especially if you want to write a book, if you want to do something that's a ninth house activity. Uh, either way though, it's really probably going to put a spotlight on, on what you believe. And especially if you felt at all, like you're not as connected to your spiritual path as you have been, this would be a really, really good time to make any kind of vow to yourself you want to make to reconnect. Going on now to the fourth where Mars enters cancer, that's going to be your seventh house of relationships. If you are in a relationship, Capricorn, this might be a time where you fight with your partner. Thank you, Mars. Mars brings bickering wherever it goes. And who better to bicker with than your significant other? (laughs) But really, you do tend to fight with your partner a little more during this time. Doesn't mean you're going to break up. But I do think Mars entering Cancer is a relief for us all because for you, Mars was in your sixth house of Gemini bringing problems to solve. And with Saturn squaring that point, it's like it was bringing problems that you couldn't solve that like needed a quick solution, but you could only give a long-term solution to, you know, like, like your window got broken, but you couldn't replace it. So you have to put a board over it. You know, it's like not what we want to (laughs) see. So Mars entering cancer won't fix all that magically make it go away, but it will not cause more of those kind of problems. It'll cause new ones. (laughs) And the new ones are going to be, again, bickering in relationships, little fights, passive aggressive fights happening, um, that kind of stuff. If you are not in a relationship, sometimes Mars going through a house will bring more of it. And so two things, if you're not in a relationship, one, it's other people are going to probably fight with you then, just not people you're married to. You know, it's like whoever's the most important other person in your life. It could be your boss. It could be your coworkers. It could be, you know, who's closest to you right now. That person might be more angry. They might be working out more. They might be more mad at you during this time. And you might need to defend yourself a little bit. So worst case scenario, be prepared to kind of defend yourself against the people around you being or calling out their passive aggressive behavior if necessary. Um, I don't think Mars and Cancer in the seventh for you is going to like destroy your life or anything uh, by any means. But Mars does rule the 11th house of friends. So this could also be a time if you're a single Capricorn, you want to meet someone. Um, The 11th house ruler in the seventh is like friends can become partners. So if you want to make alliances with people, you want to do collabs with people, or you want to um, do anything that requires partnership, having Mars be in the seventh actually might might contribute to developing relationships with people you meet in group settings. So it's a good time for that. Now, going on to the ninth, when Mercury enters Virgo, Mercury uh, is the ruler of your sixth and ninth house. It's going to be in your ninth house. So again, you might be going back and forth about what you believe. Something's going on with your beliefs this month, Capricorn. Now you might be starting to make the plan that you are setting the intentions for back on the second. And in order to really understand this transit, think about what was happening last month. You could even go back and watch my Mercury, Mercury retrograde video because there's a whole timeline of what Mercury did, right? And like what's happening with your day-to-day schedule and the meaning of life and how are those things now ready or how are you ready to go through a new plan of action from the awareness that you gathered in, in August around the 18th of August when the Kazemi happened and you realized the heart of the issue. So there might be some new plan of action in your ninth house of publishing, of teaching, of the quest you're going on, of travel, whatever ninth house topic is relevant to your life. So now going on to the eclipse in Pisces on the 17th, this is going to be in your third house, and it's going to be a release of something related to communication or your commute, maybe even your neighborhood in the next six months. So don't think this will happen on this day. And if you want more on this, check out my video on the lunar eclipse in Pisces. 
On the 22nd, Venus enters Scorpio in your 11th house. I like Venus in the 11th house is good for making friends. Very good for making friends. Good for getting dressed up all nice and going out. Good for um, meeting people, making a good impression, people charming people. And, you know, just like having, enjoying meeting people, enjoying doing stuff, enjoying being social. Venus rules your fifth house of fun. So you might be going out and doing something fun with other people. The fifth house is also your creativity. So you might be putting something you've created, especially if you're an artist, out into the world. And it might be your creation becomes public. It might be your relationship becomes public, Capricorn. Or you do something public with your partner, like have a date where you get all dressed up and everyone sees you. Uh, Venus also rules your 10th house of career, so it could possibly be around the 22nd. You take on a role in your job that is more social or requires more um, charm or more, you know, dealing with people where you need to be nice to them, especially people who are wounded or upset or something. Now going on to, but not everyone, you know, not everyone, it, not everyone's going to even do work with people. It just depends. Going on now to the last major event I have on my list for the month, which is the 26th, Mercury enters Libra. This is your 10th house. Mercury in the 10th house brings a back and forth energy to your career, your work. You might just be going back and forth and dealing with this thing and this thing or talking to this person, then this person being like a liaison between a couple different people at work. You might be thinking more about weighing pros and cons and weighing different options related to what you're going to do next, what your plan is for your job or how you're going to approach a certain project at work. Mercury rules the sixth house. So that's like the work that you do and the 10th house is the recognition you get for it. So it's possible that whatever you've been working on around the 26th just becomes more public or more visible. Um, that's a possibility. And with Mercury ruling the ninth house, House, perhaps some Capricorns are bringing meaning or fulfillment or their spiritual practice into their workplace. I do not mean telling all your friends to read the Kama Sutra or something. I mean <laughs> to practice your spiritual lessons at work, right? So if you're learning the lesson of nonviolent communication, then you're practicing that at work and using that to be diplomatic and solve problems and, and mediate, right? So some Capricorns might be doing me some kind of mediation at work at well as well, even starting from the 22nd and having a focus point on the 26th. Why? Because Libra is a sign of balancing the scales. You want to help both parties get what they need. And Mercury is the salesperson, right? So you could talk each person into like being happy with this or being happy with that. Now only take that if that makes sense for the work that you do. But overall for Capricorns, let's just kind of sum up the energy of the month. So there's focus early in the month on what you want to enjoy and what you believe. Uh, even relationships. Then mid-month, we're looking more on how you communicate what you know and learning, education, what kind of quests you're wanting to go on in life and, and you know, maybe letting go of something in, in your, that's close to you so you can do something far away. And then toward the end of the month, it's getting more social. Definitely we're dealing with people more. We're having more connections and it's probably related to our work in some way where we're talking to more people for our job or things just take on more of a social happening kind of energy. So that is what I have for Capricorn. I hope you have a beautiful, beautiful September and feel free to check out more in the eclipse video that I have that will be out on that lunar eclipse in Pisces. Now going on to our next sign, which is our Aquarius. Aquarius is. Okay, so we are on Aquarius for September. We're starting on the first when uh, Uranus goes retrograde in your fourth house. Now, Uranus is going to go retrograde here and will have gone retrograde here so many times that this is not a life-changing moment, but it does usually um, cause something that's noticeable. Something noticeable changes in your fourth house, which is your emotions, your um, your feelings, how you feel deeply about things, your house, your home, or your family of origin. Okay, so this does feel much more about 
realizing how you feel than anything else. Because on the same day, we have Pluto retrograding into Capricorn into your 12th house, and it's going to bring up psychological things. And then on the 2nd of September, we have the new moon in Virgo in your 8th house also a psychological house. So very much focus early in September on how do you feel Aquarius and how in alignment do you feel like your life is? And are you processing your emotions? Is there something emotional coming up that just needs to be processed? That would be my guess at this time. Although that second, on the 2nd of September, that new moon in Virgo in your eighth house might also be a time to set intentions related to other people's money related to intimacy, related to your deeper connections with people and your trust level of people, and even your desire to kind of uh, become a, a better, bigger version of yourself that has faced your fears. So that eighth house, I think of like, imagine everything you know in your life is like a rubber band. I think of the eighth house as like expanding that and, you know, giving you a bigger, more, it, like you face a fear and now you never have to go back to be that person who didn't know how to do that before. Or, you know, you overcome something or you share energy with someone. It's like the eighth house I think of as an expansive house, but only if you're willing to kind of do the deep inner work. So that's the first couple days of September. Now on to the 4th of September, Mars enters Cancer in your sixth house. You might just get busy, and I mean doing stuff, <laughs> on the 4th of September. So that might be um, just having more to do, especially because Mars rules your third house. That's your car and that's your commute. So the sixth house is like stuff you have to do. You might have to go a bunch of places in your local environment. You might have a bunch of errands to run. You might be busy or talking to people and just have more calls to return or other unexpected little problems that have to be solved. You know, maybe the package you sent comes back, you got to resend it. Little day-to-day -day stuff like this, more likely to come up. Mars has its joy in the sixth house because Mars loves problems. <laughs> Mars loves doing shit, you know? So what happens when Mars is in your sixth house is you end up doing shit. You might not like it, but Mars is going to be pretty happy. <laughs> So, you know, it's like you're just busier. Mars rules your 10th house as well. So work might be having you busier. You might be working overtime. You might be just doing more for your job or your role in, in work at this time. Um, it doesn't have to be a bad thing. You also might be working out more, you know, because Mars rules, um, Mars rules working out. It rules moving fast, right? So you you end up moving faster. You You have more things to pack into your day and usually, you know, it's, it's not, this doesn't feel like there's a bunch of stress being put on you. It's just more to be done, more to be done starting the 4th of September, more action, more energy required. So going on now to the ninth, when Mercury enters Virgo, that's your eighth house. Thinking about intimacy, thinking about plans to pay off debt, thinking about taxes, stocks, um, any kind of shared resources you have. So if you wrote a song and you get royalties or you have any kind of work that you've done where there's a contract with someone or you just get a percent, not just, or you get a percentage, that all comes into play. Now, if none of that relates to you, this can be um, intimacy, right? Especially because Mercury rules your fifth and eighth house. So the fifth house is like love, romance, dating. The eighth house is like getting closer to somebody. So some uh, Aquariuses might be getting closer to somebody on the ninth. You might be getting more intimate with somebody at that time. Uh, it might not be that though, because the eighth house might be you facing one of your fears that you set the intention to face back on the second. You might be taking more on your plate in general. That is, is like, it puts pressure on you, but it's like, maybe you're putting the pressure on yourself to go to the next level and transform a bit. So that can be a couple of the different ways Mercury goes into that eighth house, or you could be having more private conversations. People can be coming up to you privately and talking to you about things that they are fixing or correcting. You know, people might bring you their conversations about Virgo type things like their spreadsheets or their, you know, their problems with their spreadsheets and how stressed they are. <laughs> Of course, you have to tell me if that actually happens. That was just an example, a random example. 
but, but really it is people having Virgo problems. So like what supplements they're taking or their, you know, their nutrition or people just might be telling you about that stuff at this time. Going on now to the 17th, when we have the lunar eclipse and Pisces in your second house, Aquarius, don't get scared that you'll lose all your money, but it's possible during the next six months, a form of income that is no, is not aligned will be released that you might intentionally release it. Um, it's not always though. Sometimes, sometimes lunar eclipses in the second house can be almost like you get money and it's not, I wouldn't say that, uh, an, an end, a release to a form of making money, a release to things. You might get rid of a bunch of your stuff and go become a minimalist and go like train with monks. Not all of you are going to do that, but there is some kind of release coming related to finances in the next six months. Maybe it's payments. You're letting go of certain payments you don't want to be making. Maybe you're getting rid of, you know, downsizing your expenses. So if you want more on that, check out my video on the lunar eclipse in Pisces. Going on to the 22nd, where Venus enters Scorpio. Venus will be in your 10th house, making it better, making work and showing up publicly nicer. This could be because there's someone you like at the workplace and you just think they're cute. You know what I mean? It doesn't even have to be a person you date. It could just be something makes it a little bit sweeter. Maybe someone brings donuts that day. You know what I mean? So it literally can sweeten up your 10th house of work and your public image, your reputation. It might be you showing up to your workplace or wherever you're going publicly, looking a little more spiffy. Uh, it could be Venus rules your fourth house and your ninth house. So for some Aquariuses, you might be bringing your beliefs to work or doing something related to work that has to do with talking about your opinions or something, but it's like nice and it's, it's intense, but it's enjoyable. Um, overall though, for everyone, I would say Venus in the 10th makes work better. It makes work better or it makes it more focused on the visual aesthetic themes of the work, how it looks. So, um, I expect, you know, Venus in the 10th to bring a little bit of ease and a little bit of comfort and, you know, just something enjoyable, maybe some, uh, scorpionic music, maybe someone's listening to gangster rap at the workplace on this day. I don't know. Uh, but going on now to the 26th where Mercury enters Libra, this is going to be your ninth house Aquarius. So Mercury going into the ninth house, we, we already, um, we already had it retrograde in the eighth. Now it's in the ninth. Now it's moving forward. What is the quest you're going on in life at this point, Aquarius? Mercury has been really asking you this question since last month, since August 4th. And now it's September 26th when it goes into that ninth house. And there is a forward moving energy around what trip you want to take, around what books you want to learn, around what intuition you want to develop. You might just be listening to your intuition more. You might be having fun, enjoying learning astrology at this time. You might be enjoying learning some other spiritual or religious topic that, that you love that's like related to your beliefs that matters to you. And um, with Mercury in the eighth, maybe you get a loan to do it, or maybe you, someone else pays for it and they gift you something that lets you go on a trip or that lets you, um, learn something you want to learn in your ninth house of, of study. And it could be, it could be even something where some Aquariuses will take out a loan to be able to work with a certain mentor or teacher or someone at a higher level. That's another way that could show up. So let's go do the overview for September for Aquarius. The quick rundown is the first couple of days, this is internal, this is emotions, this is processing. This is figuring out what you're afraid of, facing it, you know, and, and maybe coming to an, a new level of, of the new version you want to be at the next level you want to be with your fears and your phobias and your things you don't want to be afraid of anymore might be coming up. Next, we have um, around the fourth, getting really busy, you know, Mars in the sixth, making you uh, have a lot to do, uh, bringing stimulation to that. The ninth house, I mean, sorry, the ninth, on the ninth, on the ninth, we've got uh, your eighth house is activated by Mercury, people telling you their secrets, getting deeper with people, getting closer to people. Uh, the 17th, 
beginning the process, the long six month process of letting go of something financial and the 22nd and 26th, a little more social, a little more public, you know, a little more dealing with kind of the, the long-term goals and the things we want to accomplish at this time. So it's almost like early September for Aquarius this is kind of going through a little bit of emotional turmoil that sort of clears you out and gets you ready for this next stage where you're going to have a lot to do and there's goals to accomplish and things to, you know, things to, um, set your sights on next. So that's what I see for Aquarius. I hope you have a great September. Feel free to check out the lunar eclipse video for more. And we're going to go on to our last but not least sign, which is our Pisces. All right. So we are on Pisces now. So for Pisces, we start off the month with Uranus going retrograde in your third house. That's on the 1st of September. So you might be reevaluating something you are learning, how you are communicating. There might be a sudden communication that was unexpected that comes up. Maybe something hopefully more minor with a sibling that comes up that you weren't expecting uh, or something with your car that comes up that was unexpected. Hopefully nothing too terrible. But um in the third house, sometimes it's just you suddenly realize you want to read this book, <laughs> you know, or you suddenly realize you you want to stop reading a book, like you shut a book, slam a book shut and don't want to read it anymore. So this may not be super huge life changing, might just be more of a day to day thing. On Also on the first, we have Pluto retrograde into Capricorn. That's your 11th house of friends, socializing your audience. If you have one, it's your the people you associate with, the people you see, the groups of people you're connected to. You might begin a slow process of realizing how you want to be more authentic with your audience, how you want to be more authentic to your friends, or what needs to change in your friend circle, if anything. Now on the second, the new moon in Virgo is in your seventh house of relationships. So immediately we're seeing this sort of relation, relational awareness, and this may not be something huge. It might just be Pisces realize on the second, these are the kind of people I want to be friends with. And that might be what's happening on that new moon in Virgo is like setting those intentions for what kind of other people you want to be in your life and consciously directing your energy toward that. So on the fourth, Mars enters cancer. That's your fifth house of fun relationships, dating, not just relationships, I should say fun, dating, creativity, and, um, kids. Now, most people are going to be more inspired. Like you might be more inspired to create something. You might be busier creating things. If you're self-employed, your self-employment might make you busier around the fourth. You just might have a lot of things to do. And if you have kids, they might be busy or they might be making you busy. Uh, but either way, when Mars enters Cancer on the 5th, one way to work with this energy is make sure you have some kind of creative outlet because that's how you work with Mars is like by making sure that energy gets released in that area. That's one of the ways. Okay. So Mars also rules your second and ninth house. So the second ruler in the fifth for you, Pisces might be you investing money into something fun. You might be paying for a trip or paying for a new course or a new, I just think it's stuff I like to do, whatever you would like to do for fun. You might be spending money on it, or you might be investing time into something you like to do for fun. Like investing time and energy into being able to enjoy yourself. Um, something along those lines. Now I do like that Mars left your fourth house where it was being squared, where it's like creating kind of an emotional frustration that can't be resolved is kind of what I would describe that way. So if that describes your month last month, especially mid month, mid August until about the 4th of September, that would be right on schedule with the energies. So Mars, I like Mars going into the fifth house because you can do something with that. When Mars was in your fourth house, which it will be until the 4th of September, that's like you want to do everything at once at home. You want to like reorganize everything at home, but Saturn says no. <laughs> Saturn says you can't. You want to work out at home, but you strain a muscle or you want to, you know, do something at home, but you literally don't have the space to do the thing you want to do. So Mars going into cancer doesn't fix those things. It just brings your energy and attention to stimulating that fifth house of creativity. I think of the fifth house also like the diva, you know, it's like, 
I'm going to sing the song because I want to sing it. So having the ninth ruler of spirituality in that fifth house of pleasure, you might just find some spiritual activities that you're really enjoying doing. Um, and that could even be because it's Mars. It could even be like, I think of like Tai Chi where you're physically moving the body, but it's in a very gentle way. And it's like for energy and stuff. (laughs) That's my very poor description of the practice. It deserves more respect than this, or even like a gentler form of yoga where it's not about efforting it, right? It's about like directing the energy with our chi and with our life force energy, but by using movements of the body. Okay. So some Pisces might be doing that. That's not the only way this can show up because the ninth house rules a bunch of other stuff. It rules foreign languages. So maybe you have fun speaking another language. Maybe you're learning something and it just becomes, you get to the point of learning a course where you're like, oh my God, I love this. I love this. You know, it could be that where you're just learning your favorite thing and it's just lighting you up and you're so excited to learn more. Um, That's another way. Or you learn something because Mars is in Cancer in the fifth. You learn something that nourishes your soul at this time. So I love this for Pisces as far as that goes. Now going on to the ninth, when Mercury enters Virgo, this is your seventh house. Probably going to be talking to people more at this time around the ninth of September. More conversations, more one-on-one conversations, more communication to be done, more other people to talk to. Nothing wrong here. I don't see anything wrong here. It just seems like more conversations, and a little bit of a back and forth energy with relationships. If you're in a long-term relationship, you might be going back and forth with your partner about a plan you guys are making. And you're like, well, wait, what about this? And the next day they're like, okay, I was thinking about that, but then I thought about this thing over here, you know? So it can be like fun conversations like this, like how are we going to do something or a fun, a a not fun, a regular fun or not fun conversation. (laughs) with another person in your life about how you're going to fix something, how you're going to improve something, what would be ideas, you know, especially because Mercury's in Virgo in the seventh. So it's like the conversations might be more about what we're improving, what we're fixing, what supplements we're taking, what, what we're letting go of, how we're consolidating information and separating the wheat from the chaff and getting rid of the things we don't need. So we can only focus on the things we do need. And you know, Mercury really in that fourth house of emotions in the seventh house of connecting one-on-one with people, you might have deep conversations around the night that might just be a friend calls you and you have a great conversation with them or about emotions, about how they feel and you're so connected to them or something else like this, where you're talking about family, you're talking about processes that need to be done with family, or you're talking about things with friends, or you're talking about their emotions and stuff or your emotions and stuff. Now going on to the 17th, we have the lunar eclipse in Pisces in your first house of you. So this is kind of an important one, although we can't really say what's going to happen, especially with an eclipse in the first house. It kind of does feel like something might change with your life direction or with your body or with your kind of your focus, right? Because first house changes are actually changes that affect the angles, the other three angles, which is your role in life in the 10th, your relationships in the 7th, or your home in the fourth. So during first house eclipses, people usually either move, they get into or out of a relationship, or they have a new job. That's usually what it is. So it could be any any big major life change, and it's like the world is your oyster, Pisces, but at around the 17th, maybe there's more awareness around what needs to be released. Remember, the eclipse doesn't necessarily always cause that change to happen on that day. Actually, almost never does the change happen on that day. And if you're like, but I want it to, you don't just trust me. You don't really want it to. I mean, the reality is that eclipses are volatile and they're unstable energy. So, um, this is not a time to like work with the eclipse. Uh, and if you want, if you guys want more on that, let me know. I can make a video on why it's not to scare you. It's just, you're, you're giving your intention to a volatile source that doesn't necessarily have your best interests at heart. The nodes are the head and tail of a dragon. They're not like happy entities that are like shining down, wanting blessings on, on you, you know? So like, it's just not a good idea, honestly. Next, (laughs) next topic and rant. Next topic. On the 22nd, Venus under Scorpio, that's going to be your ninth house. 
very, very nice and lovely for learning spiritual information. Uh, you know, especially because Venus rules your third house of what you know, and it's in the ninth house of like deeper learning. When Venus is in your ninth house, it's like you can learn something that's like an, a mind gasm. You know what I mean? It's like you can learn something that just fills your mind with so much love and, and joy. And, and it's like, then you can learn something else on top of that that like takes it further. So you you start with whatever you've already learned on the quest of your life of for knowledge and and fulfillment and into intuitive spiritual knowledge, faith and truth and beliefs. And then you learn something new that goes whoa and like brings more positive good vibes in your mind. <laughs> I'm having a hard time putting it into words, but it's, it's a lovely feeling. Uh, it is, it is definitely a time where if you're a seeker, you can find the answers to the things you seek. And, and usually it's not something you knew you were going to even find. It's like you, you, you listen to a podcast and it's just like, bam, that's the, that's the thing that hits your soul that you needed. So around the 22nd, Be open to learning new things that can cause breakthroughs and not even a breakthrough, but just can bring like a nice, pleasing, enjoyable next realization or awareness on your spiritual journey. Venus is also your eighth house ruler. The eighth house is other people's resources. The eighth house is also your psychology. So yeah, psychological awareness that comes from like a spiritual or spiritual source or a mentor or something really likely around the 22nd. So be on the lookout for insights, you know, and I'm also thinking about Venus being the, you know, sometimes when Venus, I just did a course on the ninth house. So like when Venus connects to the ninth house, sometimes we're bringing spirit into matter. So sometimes this is like, um, we do a spell for something and then it comes true and we can see it manifest in the physical world. And it's like, whoa, that was the orange ball I said I wanted to manifest and it's in the driveway. You know, it can be something more like this where you're bringing spirit into matter or, or another way to bring spirit into matter is to buy a necklace with the planets on it. You know what I mean? Like you're bringing spirit into matter and you're putting that matter, you know, into your life. So, that way I don't, I don't like that as much though. I like the first stuff I was talking about more <laughs> because it's like, there's a lot of potential when Venus enters Scorpio to have some kind of deep, um, deep, maybe transformational experience through a, a, a mentor or teacher or just like an aha moment. So go Pisces. This, I love this for you. I know you're going to love this. Um, although, you know, I do have to warn you that with Venus in Scorpio, one of my, associations for this is that love equals pain. And so for some, there's a topic around this that is like something painful, like uh, an old trauma or an old hurt that might be the source of the issue. And maybe you get to the root cause of that pain from a spiritual or spiritual or religious perspective. And that somehow brings awareness to it. So it may not just be the, ah, everything's good and positive. It might be like, oh my God, now I know why that was so painful and I have more awareness now. Okay, moving on to the 26th when Mercury enters Libra, that's your eighth house of other people's money, transformation, facing your fears. I feel like maybe you got some awareness on the 22nd that's helping you move forward on the 26th. Related to intimacy and relationships, maybe you become more intimate with someone. Maybe someone else or you spark a conversation with someone and you get closer to them and you're just closer to someone and that's it. Maybe there is topic uh, a topic of trust or balance or someone else comes to you with their um, problem related to Libra stuff, which would be like, you know, how do I balance this in my wardrobe? <laughs> or like, how do I have more balance in my life? Or, you know, I'm, you know, maybe someone else is bringing a conversation to you, but it can be most likely Mercury in the eighth. This is going to be a conversation. It's going to be about something deeper, or it's going to be you realizing something about an eighth house topic, like, um, taxes, intimacy, other people's money, um, what you owe your debt, how to balance out your debt. Maybe you get some insight on that, anything like that. So it can be financial too, because the eighth house is, is about finances. Um, so again, maybe 
maybe there's just focus on this and you're thinking about it. Maybe you're just going over the pros and cons of paying off your bills or something, uh, or a loan or something, or whether to take one out or not. And you're balancing that. That's another way this could show up. Overall, I'm just loving that, uh, that, um, Venus in the ninth house for you, Pisces. I think the 22nd is going to be something lovely. So let's just do the overview of September for Pisces. Now we have, um, on, in the beginning of the month, it's about your mind, what you're thinking. It's about reassessing who you're with, uh, reassessing your relationships, bringing thoughts, but it's a quiet reassessing. Nothing even needs to happen in the physical world. Just bringing your gentle awareness to who you're with and who you want to be with and whether the people you're around are really working for you. You could see if the people around you are against you or not working for you in any way on the 1st of September, you will probably be really aware of this. On on the 4th, something pleasurable in your fifth house, learning or making money becomes really fun at this time, or you're investing money into your fun. On the 9th, Mercury and Virgo brings that seventh house energy of just conversations. Then the 17th, we've got some kind of release going on. On the 22nd, this is when we have our, our nice, very lovely realization of some kind, awareness, enjoyment of travel, a vacation, something along those lines. And then at the end of the month, we're having more conversations. This does feel like a month where it's a lot of this month is going to be about other people and how you relate to them and what you want to be relating to them with and, and dealing with any kind of relationship issues or, um, trust issues with the people around you and acting accordingly and making plans and, and figuring out kind of who's on your side and who isn't and, and who you need with you in this next stage of life, which, you know, there might be a realization too mid month around, what needs to change? Maybe there is a role change. Maybe you get into a relationship or you end one. That's a possibility. But for me, the possibility of that doesn't just land in September. It lands in the next six months where maybe there's more life changes related to living situations and who you're with and stuff. And so it's almost like, where where do you need to be, Pisces? And who do you need to be with to be living the life you want to live. This month might bring awareness to those things. It might not be the month where you're fixing it all. It just might be the month where you're getting the clarity on where it really is at, where you're at with other people, where you're at with your current living situation, where you're at with your job, your your career, and you know what needs to be different. So that's what I have for Pisces. I hope you have a lovely September. And if you want more, you can check out my video on the eclipse and I will see you beautiful souls in the next video.